Just returned from uh, a week's visit to the United States of America. The main purpose of my going to the United States was to meet with the leadership of the Jewish community all over the country. And thanks to the excellent organization of the United Jewish Appeal, I have been able to meet, in fact, with the entire leadership of Jewish communities, even the smallest and the remotest ones, because all these meetings took place on a regional framework. Uh, I thought it was necessary for us, for me, uh, to update my list, where I met with the national cabinet of the Israel Bonds Organization, with the Secretary of State, Dr. Kissinger, and his colleagues at the State Department. It was rather a long meeting from 11.30 up to 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We had a working uh, session and then a working lunch, and we could cover a wide range of topics which uh, both countries are interested in. I have to admit that the talks were not easy and not always smooth, but it gave us a very good opportunity uh, to express our views very freely, very frankly, and a, in a friendly way, as it should be done, between friendly governments and friendly nations, if I may add, friendly personalities. As much as we wanted to avoid the past, we couldn't help ourselves, and part of the time uh, was devoted uh, to exchange views, what were the causes which brought about the uh, much deplorable uh, suspension of the talks, which all of us pinned so much hopes in. But most of the time was devoted to the future. In fact, we concentrated ourselves in the future because none of us wants a stagnation in the area, and both sides could rely on the important statement made by President Ford in his State of the World delivered recently to a joint session of both houses of Congress. Uh, President Ford said in his uh, statement that America didn't want a stagnation, nor did she want a war. She was ready to play a major role, and she was ready to participate in any initiative, whether in Geneva or any other form. And I couldn't agree more than with this formula. Now, based on this formula, uh, we could decide that both parties uh, should uh, do their best in order to work out schemes, ideas, maybe plans for different options of how the uh, political momentum can be revived in the area, whether within the scope of an interim agreement, either in overhaul negotiations in Geneva or outside Geneva. This was not discussed between me and Dr. Kissinger, although the Geneva Conference was mentioned quite frequently in our talks. It is quite natural. But I don't exclude the possibility that the Geneva Conference may be convened one day after it is being well prepared in order not to have another failure, which may lead to other initiatives, whether in Geneva or even outside Geneva, as it happened. Uh, after the first Geneva Conference, as we all remember, we had the, the two joint groups of Israelis and Egyptians, Israelis and Syrians, to negotiate the disengagement agreements, negotiations which took place mainly in the area itself. Nevertheless, they were considered as a function of the Geneva Conference. Mr. Mr. Officially and publicly, 
Dr. Kissinger never blamed Israel, never put the honors on Israel, and he was even handed in all his descriptions. There were rumors that uh, American officials said different things, mainly blaming Israel in private talks. I, I, I chose to stick to the official statements rather than to the rumors and gossips, because in my own practice as a foreign minister, Whatever I say publicly, I believe in, and I don't have two languages to speak, one in public and one in private. Has anything changed in this? No, we haven't discussed yet what should be the procedures and the practical measures to be taken. As I said before, each side will, will think it over, will, 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 uh, will work out ideas and schemes. Then we shall have a dialogue in which we shall compare our ideas and we shall try to coordinate as much as possible. Mr. Alon, could you understood that uh, the American found it necessary to reassess the situation in two fields. One is the diplomatic, the other one is the strategic. And I really believe that after certain unhappy developments which took place in all parts of the world, it was high time that America should reassess its policies and doctrines. I didn't feel any, any I didn't sense any attempt by my hosts to use the reassessment as a sort of a leverage, as a, as a pressure on Israel, because I, 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 I could, I could uh, realize again that America uh, attaches importance to Israel's capability of defending itself by itself, which I think is a very uh, correct approach. Nevertheless, I don't want to predict. I know that there are different views, conflicting views, as it always has been in America vis-a-vis -vis Israel, including different views whether Israel should be supplied or not. Uh, nevertheless, I think that our uh, latest talk was useful even in this respect. Mr. Uh, until this very moment, all the signed contracts about uh, American supplies to Israel are fulfilled. There are no delays whatsoever. Uh, however, there are certain elements which uh, were promised to us, but no contracts have been signed yet. But uh, 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 anyhow, the delivery uh, needed uh, some more months, even according to the original uh, negotiations between us and the respecting, uh, respective American agencies. And of course, as long as the reassessment uh, continues, they are not uh, the, these bilateral talks about fixing exact uh, ways and means how to deliver the, the, uh, the weapons which have been ordered. Uh, I, I do hope, I have reason to hope, that no delays will take place in the future either. Mr. Arab, after all that has happened. Yes, he is a friend of Israel, although I think that he uh, may think def differently than we do on certain uh, problems that we are facing. This can happen even with this, within this, this country itself. Uh, nevertheless, uh, I thought that uh, from what I could learn from our talk, that um, Dr. Kissinger uh, uh, felt that uh, Israel uh, was uh, responsible more than I think for the uh, suspension of the talks. Nevertheless, uh, Dr. Kissinger as a person, Dr. Kissinger as a member of the government, the government as a whole, should be considered as a friendly government. And no question that the American people is a friendly people. I must say that I could sense a national consensus in America of friendliness towards Israel. The people, the Congress, and the administration. Thank you very much.